Last week on SmackDown, the Scottish warrior Drew McIntyre made his intentions extremely clear, gunning for Tony Rhodes and his newly won World Heavyweight Championship. But what happened after SmackDown on WWE.com is the developing story we open with tonight. Drew McIntyre, cameras catching up with the man as he approached his old friend, the Celtic warrior Sheamus. And you see here, whatever McIntyre was selling, Sheamus simply wasn't buying. Well, the Celtic Warrior took to X earlier this week and had this to say, this version of Drew isn't the one I came up in this industry with. Instead of a handshake, I think he needs a beating. Someone to humble him, and I'll take great pride in doing just that. Bold words by the Celtic Warrior Sheamus, which then led to Drew McIntyre to respond just days later. McIntyre went on to say, you're right, old friend. This isn't the same Drew. This is a cold-hearted killer Drew, something you used to be. If it's a fight you want, I'll see you in the ring on Friday. Drew McIntyre and Sheamus at odds, and these two men are on a collision course to tonight's SmackDown main event. The Scottish Warrior may have his eyes on Cody Rhodes' World Heavyweight Championship, but a run-in with the Celtic Warrior Sheamus is on hand live tonight on SmackDown. But we kick things off with some women's division action. Io Sky approaches the squared circle on the same night where Queen of the Ring first round matches will commence here on SmackDown. Later tonight here in Cincinnati, Blair Davenport set to go one-on-one -on -one with the shiniest wizard, Tegan Knox. Also on hand, former women's world champion Raquel Rodriguez looks to bounce back as she goes one-on-one -on -one with the very unpredictable Nikki Cross Two first round matches in the Queen of the Ring tournament coming your way live tonight from the Heritage Bank Center. Io Sky and Asuka approach the squared circle to kick things off on SmackDown. Two weeks ago, they went eye to eye with the women's tag team champion Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark, moments removed from a successful title defense. Baszler and Stark obviously know with the championship comes a target on their back. Asuka and Io Sky are looking to hit that target dead on and move towards the women's tag team titles. Their pursuit of the gold brings them to this one-on-one -on -one occasion as Io Sky has got Zoe Stark straight up. Momentum and opportunity hang in the balance to kick things off. And accompanied by Shayna Baszler from Las Vegas, Nevada. One half of the women's tag team champions, Zoe Stark. Well, as the women's tag team champions approach the ring, we turn your attention to one week from tomorrow at WWE Live as the WWE Tag Team titles will be defended. The LWO earning number one contendership just last week. They get their rematch with Angel and Humberto next Saturday at the WWE Live channel member exclusive event. Hit the join button down below or the link up in the cards and don't miss the opportunity to punch your golden ticket to what is going to be an extraordinary event kick it off so many awesome events in the month of September. But here we are in the Heritage Bank Center in Cincinnati, Ohio on Friday Night SmackDown. The genius of the sky, EO Sky, along with Asuka calling their shot against Zoe and Shayna tonight could start down the path towards a championship shot. EO Sky, Asuka, no strangers to the women's tag team champions. It was actually earlier this month that Baszler and Stark defeated Asuka and Io in a tag team matchup right here on SmackDown. A victory for Baszler and Stark, of course, punched their ticket to Saturday night's main event back on August the 3rd in Minneapolis. They defeated Monday Night Raw's Chelsea Green and Sonya Deville to win the women's tag team titles. As we mentioned just two weeks ago, a successful defense for those two. Turning away another tag team from Monday Night Raw as Katana Chance and Caden Carter made their presence felt here on SmackDown. Baszler and Stark proving to be one hell of a unit that continues to earn the respect of the WWE Universe. But I don't think there is any respect between the tag team champions and Io Sky and Asuka. Sky and Asuka have really come together throughout the summer, originally through a common enemy in Raquel Rodriguez. When the women's tag team championship opportunity was on the horizon, they were not hesitant to throw their name in the hat. 
Eos Sky hot out of the gate as this matchup kicked off, but now the young protege of Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark looking to turn things around. Zoe's really come into her own after being taken under the wing of former women's world champion Shayna Baszler earlier this year. She has continued to impress. But Io Sky, a veteran of the squared circle, world traveled and has held championships all around the globe, including here in the WWE. And Io Sky and Oscar are looking to add a new accolade to their long list of them. And as we mentioned, a victory over Zoe Stark could truly start Io Sky and Oscar down that path here tonight. We are live from the Heritage Bank Center, Cincinnati, Ohio. Thank you for joining us here on Friday Night SmackDown. Still to come, the Scottish Warrior Drew McIntyre, one on one with the Celtic Warrior Sheamus. And you gotta wonder where the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes resides tonight after not one but two Claymore kicks from McIntyre last week here on SmackDown. Developing story regarding the World Heavyweight Championship when we turn our focus back to Zoe Stark and Io Sky as Zoe is now looking to stretch out the rib cage and do some damage to Io. This is a very smart maneuver here by Stark. You take away the rib cage and you really do some damage on it. Might like take away a little bit of the breathing and if you ain't breathing correctly, you are gonna be flying around this ring like Io Sky loves to do. Luckily for Io, it would have created some separation there on a very game, Zoe Stark. Stark and Baszler have been excellent as a duo. As of late here on Friday Night SmackDown, have seen nothing but success. But Io Sky and Asuka are looking to turn their momentum around here tonight. And I am sure move one step closer to challenging for the World Tag Team titles of the women's division. Io Sky dipping and dodging. German suplex snapping. Zoe Stark right to the back of her neck. Zoe still in this matchup. Resilience being shown by Stark. As we were talking about a few minutes ago, Stark is really coming to her own under the wing of Shayna Baszler. Really using Zoe Stark throughout this year, mentoring her. Zoe Stark has clearly benefited from the knowledge that Shayna Baszler has bestowed upon her. Wait a minute here, I think Charles Robinson a little out of position. There you go, but nonetheless, Io Sky still in this matchup. Io Sky loves to take things to the air, but Zoe Stark not afraid of it either, as we saw with that springboard drop kick. But now Stark bringing Sky down to the mat. Boot right to the side of the dome. And that could be all she wrote, not just yet. Zoe Stark is building momentum. Might not have gotten the three count that time, but Io Sky better be wary. She is in trouble at the current moment. Zoe could be looking for Z360, but Io Sky, I think, saw it coming a mile away. Now EO, the one, trying to get back in the driver's seat, keeping it simple, but most importantly effective. Driver backdrop right on the knee. And that'll certainly take a hell of a lot of momentum out of your sails. Zoe Stark muscled right down to the canvas by the agility of EO Sky. First of three women's contests coming your way tonight. Two of them gonna be a part of the Queen of the Ring tournament that of course kicked off this past Monday night on Raw. The first round SmackDown matches begin right here in Cincinnati this evening. High stakes, high reward on the on the road, excuse me, to of course the Queen of the Ring event coming up in Madison Square Garden on the 21st of September. Yo Sky has got Zoe Stark exactly where she wants her. Knee right to the jaw. And any given day, that could have been a knockout blow. Unfortunately for Io, today is not that day. And now it's Zoe Stark. A sense of urgency here out of one half of the women's tag team champions. Io Sky was feeling it. Zoe Stark, however, taking the rug right out from underneath her feet. And one half of the champs is now writing a different story in your opening contest. They spoke too soon. Never count out the veteran Io Sky. She goes behind once more, trapping the arms in another German into the pinfall. They almost had her that time. Beautifully executed bridge by Io to go right into the pinfall. No waste in motion by the veteran. So we start down after we saw that sense of urgency, we called it. Io Sky not allowing a comeback to be had here in Cincinnati. So we start taking down. Io going to the top. Could be looking for the over the moon salt. Delivered directly to the heart of one half of the women's tag team champions, and this match is over. 
EO Sky getting the best of the young Zoe Stark here on Friday Night SmackDown. Well, we could be looking at future challengers for the women's tag team titles. EO and Asuka making their presence felt two weeks ago. EO Sky getting it done here tonight. Well, we want to take you back to last week on SmackDown, a number one contenders matchup between A Town Down Under and the LWO. But chaos ensued in the backstage area as the reemergence of the almighty Bobby Lashley was to be had. Had his hands all over the man who put him on the shelf back in the month of July in London, England. That being the apex predator, Randy Orton. Randy Orton already not in a good mood after falling short to the Rockets SummerSlam and Bobby Lashley's return just made matters worse. But as we speculated, last week was only just the beginning and we can confirm coming up on the 14th of September in Montreal, the almighty Bobby Lashley gets his hands on the Apex Predator Randy Orton, mano y mano, one on one, Lashley and Orton set to battle at no mercy. Last year, 16 of WWE's best cruiserweights clashed in an eight week tournament to decide who stood above the rest at 205 pounds and under. This year, we do it all over again. Sunday afternoons at 12 p.m. Eastern time, kicking off on September the 29th, 16 men representing SmackDown, NXT, and TNA Wrestling will participate in the 2024 edition of the Cruiserweight Classic. With the field more wide open than ever before, who will scratch and claw their way to greatness and be crowned the winner of the historic Cruiserweight Classic. Well, we are less than one month away from the kickoff to the 2024 Cruiserweight Classic Tournament. Sunday afternoon, September the 29th, going to be the kickoff event from Hammerstein Ballroom in Manhattan, New York. And this man, Wesley, absolutely looking to throw his name in the hat. And that 16-man tournament coming up next month. He is hot off the heels of a victory over Nathan Frazier just 48 hours ago on Velocity. Wesley awarded an opportunity tonight to possibly get himself in contention for championship gold. And as advertised, back in action tonight, the United States Champion, Carmelo Hayes. Melo winning that title back in July, retaining it at Saturday night's main event earlier this month. When Melo shoots, as he says, Melo doesn't miss. And his opponent, accompanied by Trick Williams from Boston, Massachusetts, weighing in at 210 pounds, the WWE. Well, as we mentioned, Wesley picking up an exciting victory over Nathan Frazier this past Wednesday on Velocity. Velocity goes down each and every Wednesday afternoon only on the No Nation Gaming TikTok. Go ahead and scan the QR code that is upcoming on your screen. Be sure to hit the follow and never miss a moment of the action each and every Wednesday on Velocity. Wesley now stares into the eyes of championship opportunity. The United States gold may not be on the line tonight, but a victory over Melo, you gotta believe, puts Wesley at the top of the line. Carmelo Hayes continuing to climb the ranks of Friday Night SmackDown, and dare I say so is Trick Williams, a man who competed in the Money in the Bank ladder match last month, continuing to si hang alongside, I should say, the United States champion Carmelo Hayes. Trick Williams, I'm sure, looking for his opportunity here on SmackDown, but tonight it is about the champ himself and his opponent in Wesley. Wesley coming hot out of the gate, taking down Mello. Mello loves to take things to the air, but Wesley just brings that explosivity. Almost unpredictable at times. This is former NXT Tag Team Champion. Wesley is 
As we mentioned, staring into the eyes of the United States Champion tonight. He has stared into the eyes of championship opportunities many a times before here on SmackDown. Just a few months ago was up against JD McDonough in the main event here on the blue brand for the Cruiserweight Championship of the World. Unfortunately came up short, but now with the Cruiserweight Classic looming, something we talked about very in depth this past Wednesday in the matchup against Nathan Frazier. Wesley got to be looking to climb back to the ranks, back to the top of the cruiserweight division. Tonight, a different opportunity. The United States champion opposing him. Carmelo Hayes, as we talked about, climbing the ranks. Somebody who has done just that throughout the summer here on SmackDown. That was back in the spring that Carmelo Hayes came up short but put, against, put up against a great effort against the tribal chief, Roman Reigns, right here on the blue brand. Went on to defeat Ricochet. The United States, for the United States Championship, back at the Great American Bash. Defended that gold successfully in Chad Gable's hometown of Minneapolis, Minnesota, against Alpha Academy's leader himself. Back at Saturday night's main event earlier this month. Now Carmelo Hayes, looking to keep his momentum sky high, but Wesley looking to write a different story. Opportunity is always a word that is looming around SmackDown, looming around Monday Night Raw, looming around this industry, and Wesley is looking to make the most of it tonight. Awesome maneuver to get Carmelo Hayes off the top rope, and now sending Melo into the ropes. Little reversal there, Wesley, look at him go. Take it down the United States Champion again. Looking for an upset here on SmackDown, and not just yet. Wesley and Carmelo Hayes producing some high octane action here on Friday Night SmackDown. And so much action on the horizon in the month of September. As now Wesley delivers a beautifully executed destroyer to the United States Champion. Well, Trick Williams trying to, I don't know if he's trying to get the eye off the ball of Wesley or referee John Cohn, but it's clearly working out right now. Trick Williams trying to aid the United States Champion. It is interesting to know Trick Williams, I shall say, back out here tonight. He did not accompany Carmelo Hayes in his defense of the United States Championship back at Saturday night's main event. Melo won it all by himself. You got to give him credit. The running buddy of Melo, Trick in the house here on SmackDown. And look at a pay. The United States Champion dividends. First 48 in Wesley Abel somehow, someway, able to get the shoulder off the canvas. Carmelo Hayes is finding himself in control and looking to sustain it. Whether Trick Williams is on the outside or not, Melo continues to impress and looking to prove to the world once again why he is a rightful holder of the United States Championship. Wesley not looking to see this opportunity slip through his fingers. Easier said than done as Melo is keeping his foot on the gas pedal. Eyes locked. Wesley once again creating some distance, going for that overhead kick, nobody to be found. Missile drop kick by an ever explosive United States champion. And now a second first 48. Wesley putting up a hell of a fight, but the United States champion is just on the top of his game. A great fight tonight on SmackDown. Oh, wow, look at this. This is, well, dare I say, a little uncharacteristic out of the United States champion, but showing a sign of respect to Wesley after an exciting fight in front of this Cincinnati crowd. Well, you love to see it. The United States champion. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Ludwig Kaiser? Kaiser making his way out to the stage. And he's got his eyes locked in the United States Champion. Is Imperium's Ludwig Kaiser looking to challenge Carmelo Hayes for the red, white, blue, and gold? So are you gonna die today? Make it
The Queen of the Ring tournament kicked off this past Monday night on Raw as Liv Morgan and Bayley advanced to the quarterfinals. But now we look to the Friday night SmackDown side and we are set to kick off some action courtesy of the Queen of the Ring here in Cincinnati, Ohio. The unpredictable and downright unforgiving inside of that squared circle, Nikki Cross set for a run in with the former women's world champion Raquel Rodriguez. Just last week here on SmackDown, Raquel alongside the LWO's first lady, Zelina Vega, taking down the women's world champion, Roxanne Perez, and the returning Alexa Bliss in tag team action. We got some news coming out of that matchup that we're gonna touch on in just moments here on SmackDown. But before that, let's talk about Raquel Rodriguez, somebody who has taken 2024 by storm. She has won the Elimination Chamber earlier this year. She's competed at WrestleMania. She held the Women's World Championship and owned victories over Shayna Baszler, Asuka, and Io Sky, but just fell short, fighting an emotional battle against the young prodigy Roxanne Perez two weeks ago at SummerSlam. I am sure Raquel Rodriguez is itching for another go around with the prodigy. Roxanne Perez gonna have her hands full at Queen of the Ring, but as for Raquel, an opportunity arises in the first round of the Queen of the Ring tournament. Nikki Cross, as we mentioned, unpredictable. Raquel Rodriguez, resilient and powerful. Very contrasting, interesting styles going at it. Here in the first round of the Queen of the Ring tournament. As we mentioned this past Monday Night on Raw, Liv Morgan returning to action. An exciting matchup against Mi Chin. Liv punching her ticket to the quarterfinals. And Bailey, a lot of animosity with her opponent in the first round. Chelsea Green, but able to withstand the numbers. And Bailey moving on to the next round as well. We will see right here tonight on SmackDown who's going to move on to the quarterfinals in two weeks' time. In your first week of first round matches, Raquel Rodriguez. Showcasing her power, showcasing her strength, and a little bit of speed behind it. Nikki Cross may be unpredictable, but Raquel Rodriguez has not climbed the ladder of success in 2024 without reason. On top of Friday Night SmackDown for several months, and even when she wasn't the Women's World Champion, she was just trying to climb the ladder, trying to earn her shot at the gold. Raquel Rodriguez was becoming a feared woman in the SmackDown locker room. Cal Rodriguez a lot of times can be described as a full package player. Speed, strength, power, ability, agility, I should say. Cal Rodriguez now back to the drawing board after losing her women's world championship two weeks ago. You know, we talked about it last week. A lot of that reasoning, I, I should say, regarding Raquel losing her title at SummerSlam, I think really revolves around fighting an emotional battle, something she did not do against Shayna and Asuka and Io Sky. Raquel has also thrived in deep waters in those championship rounds per se. Roxanne Perez did not allow the matchup to get that far. Forced Raquel Rodriguez to see red, got under her skin in the lead up to SummerSlam and Perez was just effective and was just naturally the better woman at SummerSlam. And as for tonight on SmackDown, Nikki Cross just may be the better woman as well. We're going to talk about strength. Cross showing a sign of it right there. Muscling Raquel on her shoulders and bringing her right down to the floor. And now on top, Nikki Cross dropping an elbow to the heart. Might have even been the throat. And damn near almost walked away with a golden ticket punch to the quarterfinals. But Raquel Rodriguez, resilient as all hell. Cross, however, looking to stay on the offense here. Countered by Raquel. And a couple of shots taken down Cross. One thing about Raquel Rodriguez that we have seen throughout this year is that even when you think she's down and out, she knows how to rise like a phoenix. Deep rounds, championship waters is where she has thrived in in-ring action. Nikki Cross, however, might not see the light of day of getting to those deep waters because Raquel Rodriguez just sent her for a massive amusement park ride and she's on her way to the quarterfinals. Neck breaker, slingshot, whiplash, whatever you want to call it. Raquel knocking out Nikki Cross just long enough 
to defeat her here tonight and move on to the quarterfinals of the Queen of the Ring in just two weeks' time. The former women's world champion back to the drawing board looking to start all over again and tonight she is heading down the right path. Moving on as the first SmackDown participant to join the quarterfinals. We want to take you back to last week on SmackDown. We touched on it briefly a few minutes ago. Raquel and Zelina, 2v2 against the new women's world champion and the returning Alexa Bliss. An exciting, downright physical tag team matchup. And then the back half saw the LWO's first lady upsetting the women's world champion, Roxanne Perez. Well, that victory right there has earned Selena Vega a chance at destiny as she is set to go one-on-one -on -one with the prodigy Roxanne Perez in New York City, in Madison Square Garden. Selena Perez for the Women's World Championship on the 21st of September at Queen of the Ring. We got more first round action live here on SmackDown. Blair Davenport, cold and hard hitting inside of that squared circle. Can she get through the shiniest wizard, Tegan Knox? Who's moving on? We find out up next here in Cincinnati. Can't get enough universe mode? Well, now is your chance to secure a backstage pass to more universe than ever before. Become a Noah Nation Gaming Channel member and gain entry into monthly house shows that directly affect your episodic viewing of Universe Mode. Also, take a peek behind the curtain with behind the scenes updates, exclusive content to see how Universe Mode is brought to life each and every week. Hit the join button down below, become a Backstage Pass channel member, and get your front row seat to more Universe than ever before. It's a better time than any to become a Noah Nation Gaming channel member. WWE Live for channel members only coming up one week from tomorrow. And you're not going to want to miss a second of that action. But we are back inside the Heritage Bank Center in Cincinnati, Ohio, as the first round of the Queen of the Ring tournament is set to continue. Blair Davenport, 1v1 against Tegan Knox. Both of these women are going to break through the glass ceiling here on SmackDown. We have seen both of them in the ring with some of the top stars of the SmackDown Women's Division today. Over the last few months, Blair Davenport specifically has a couple of recent go-arounds with Raquel Rodriguez really pushing the Women's World Champion, or I should say former Women's World Champion, to her limits. Blair Davenport was unsuccessful in both of those contests. But tonight, an opportunity to now not only do some work inside the ring, but come out on the other end of the result. Incredible agility shown by a woman who moments ago we described as cold inside of that ring. Hard hitting at that. Blair Davenport just brings a bit of a presence that sometimes has her opponents defeated before the bell even sounds. And that might be the case against Tegan Knox tonight. Tegan Knox returning from multiple knee injuries earlier this year and has really struggled to find her footing here on SmackDown. She's had a couple of go-arounds with former champions, top stars of the division. Not a lot of victories have gone the way of the shiniest wizard, and unfortunately, that bad luck may continue. Blair Davenport is all over Knox in the first round tournament matchup tonight. Knox trying to create some distance and a big time uppercut taking Blair dead off her feet. Tegan Knox not to be underestimated. Results may not have gone her way over the last few months since her SmackDown return. As we talk about each and every Friday night, all the time here on SmackDown, any given day can be your day to create momentum, to create an opportunity. And through the Queen of the Ring, 16 superstars are getting an opportunity. It's not only the chance to write your name in history as the first winner of the inaugural Queen of the Ring tournament. Of course, the winner of this tournament will earn a championship matchup this November at Survivor Series. 
A whole lot riding on the line over the next couple of weeks in the lead up to Madison Square Garden as Tegan Knox looking to push the pace at ringside. Tilt the world tornado DDT. These two women will in the scratch and claw and leave no stone unturned in their pursuit of moving on to the quarterfinals. Tegan Knox bringing this fight back inside the ring. Down goes Blair Davenport. I'll tell you, Blair was high out of the gate off the opening bell, but she might have her bell rung at the current moment. Maybe we spoke too soon. Tegan Knox out of the ropes, but there's a reversal by Knox, and Blair might have just been countering off instinct. Tegan Knox just needs to find a way to put the pieces together. Secure victory tonight. Blair Davenport has proven to be near her best as of late, but victories, as we mentioned, not going her way either. Who is going to be better than their best tonight? Who is going to outdo the other and advance in the Queen of the Ring tournament? Blair Davenport trying to create some distance. Tegan Knox might have gave her just a little bit of R&R &R by letting her roll to the outside and come back in on her own accord. Blair Davenport switch, flipping the switch, I should say, off to Saito. Might not have been able to get the count that time. Tegan Knox's feet were under the ropes, but nonetheless, the damage certainly done. Referee Jessica Carr has got her eyes locked on this physical contest thus far between two young women here on SmackDown who have got to be hungry for opportunity. Of course, the Queen of the Ring tournament set to continue this Monday night on Raw. Natalia set to go one-on-one -on -one to the center of the universe herself. Tiffany Stratton this Monday. Also, the man, Becky Lynch, Gets into another go around. They have her physical Piper Niven. A lot of animosity between those two women coming up this Monday night on Raw. Meanwhile, Tegan Knox looking to get back into this thing tonight on SmackDown. Choke slam. And damn near almost had this match won. A sense of urgency out of Knox. Blair Davenport was really starting to dish out some punishment. Knox created a little bit of distance, hit that choke slam, and it was enough to get victory. Shiniest wizard on Blair. But Blair Davenport still into this matchup. And you hear the appreciation out of this sold out Heritage Bank Center here in Cincinnati. We're going to correct ourselves a few moments ago. We said that choke slam was enough for Tegan Knox to get victory. It wasn't, but it certainly brought her one step closer, as did that shining wizard. But now Blair Davenport looking to flip the script. Turn and Knox inside out. But Knox is still into this contest. Man, we have got a barn burner in the midst of the Queen of the Ring tournament here on SmackDown. And you should expect nothing less between two women who are dying for an opportunity. Knee right to the face. But Tegan Knox continues to survive, and you see frustration starting to pour out of the heart of Blair. I think I'm with this Cincinnati audience. I don't want to see this matchup come to a close anytime soon. We've only seen a total of four first round matches so far in this tournament. And dare I say, these two women are taking the cake as the most entertaining for this WWE Universe as Blair Davenport now muscling over Tegan Knox. Blair heading to the top. Tegan Knox on her feet. Once again, getting, getting caught. Blair Davenport is starting to stack the offense. Tegan Knox might have had her last ditch effort. Off the choke slam, followed by the Shining Wizard. Blair showing no signs of slowing down, but maybe Tegan Knox isn't going to give her a choice. Oh, wait a minute. Schoolboy might be catching Blair off her guard this time. Not just yet. Tegan Knox trying to find a will and a way, but Blair, back to what we were saying, not looking to let up. Kamora Lock submission hold in on Tegan Knox. Got it in out of nowhere. Knox with nowhere to go. Tap out by Tegan. That was one hell of a matchup on both sides of the squared circle. But only one woman capable of punching their ticket to the quarterfinals of the Queen of the Ring tournament. And now we know that Blair is moving on.
Two women with something to prove, leaving everything inside the squared circle tonight. But it is Blair Davenport who will find her name in the quarterfinals of the Queen of the Ring bracket. She meets the winner of Alexa Bliss and Shotzi. We look on to next week here on SmackDown. Indy Hartwell set to go one-on-one -on -one with TNA representative Jordan Grace in the first round of the Queen of the Ring tournament. And as we just briefly mentioned, the goddess Alexa Bliss, she returned to the blue brand last week, and she's back in action next week against the ballsy badass Shotzi as the Queen of the Ring tournament will continue. Coming your way on Saturday night, September 14th, witness the aftermath of the biggest party of the summer, SummerSlam, as WWE and Noah Nation Gaming channel memberships proudly present No Mercy. No Mercy comes to you live from the Bell Center in Montreal, Quebec, Canada at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Don't miss championship clashes, personal battles, high stakes, and high rewards, all on the line on the 14th of September at WWE No Mercy. Over the last few weeks on SmackDown, the Irish ace J.D. McDonough has been in hot pursuit of Tyler Bate and getting his Cruiserweight Championship back. He pinned Tyler Bate's shoulders to the canvas two weeks ago in tag team action. And then we take you back to last week, one-on-one -on -one at the Bruiserweight Butch. Bit of a grudge match here, and you see J.D. McDonough using an underhanded tactic or two to secure the victory. Well, J.D. McDonough ensuring there is nobody ahead of him in line to challenge for the Cruiserweight Championship of the World. And next week here on SmackDown, he gets his opportunity. It's a return match from Money in the Bank back in July. McDonough, bait for the Championship of the Cruiserweight Division. Also signed for next week here on the Blue Brand, ahead of No Mercy on the 14th. Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits are set for a big time six man tag team matchup against A Town Down Under and Randy Orton. Who's going to get the edge and build momentum to the one on one meeting in Montreal? We find out next week here on SmackDown. But it is main event time inside the Heritage Bank Center in Cincinnati. The Scottish Warrior Drew McIntyre goes mano a mano with an old friend and foe. The following contest is scheduled for one fall, making his way to the ring from Air Scotland. Weighing in at 254 pounds, the Scottish warrior, Drew McIntyre! Well, one thing that Seamus alluded to is there has certainly been a change in attitude for the Scottish warrior Drew McIntyre over the last few months. And whether we like it or not, McIntyre's flip of the switch has continued to bring him success. Back at SummerSlam, taking down the Mad Dragon, Ilya Dragunov, in one-on-one -on -one action, something he was unable to do earlier this summer. McIntyre making his intentions clear last week, laying out the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes, the new World Heavyweight Champion, with not one, but two Claymore kicks. McIntyre has been hell-bent on getting back the world championship that he lost last November at Survivor Series. Now more than ever, the Scottish Warrior may be getting just that. But tonight here on SmackDown, McIntyre runs into an old friend, an old foe, whichever you want to call him. One thing is for sure, it is going to be a fight here in Cincinnati. Well, dare I say, this is a bit of an opportunity for the Celtic Warrior Sheamus here tonight. Ever since being drafted over to Friday Night SmackDown back in the month of April, he has not seen too much success. Sheamus back in action tonight against Drew McIntyre, somebody who maybe he picked a fight with. Maybe, maybe you can blame it on McIntyre, but either way, these two men meeting up in the backstage area last week talking trash on social media, but you get it done inside of the ring. And now Sheamus goes up against McIntyre, somebody who has built some momentum for himself here on SmackDown as of late. 
could be a massive win for the Celtic Warrior if he can get the job done here on SmackDown. Oh, remains to be seen. Sheamus saying that somebody needs to teach Drew McIntyre some respect. Somebody's got to humble the Scottish Warrior, and it looks as if Sheamus is going to take the role in doing so. Well, here we go. We are underway with your SmackDown main event. It's been an action-packed night here in Cincinnati with the Queen of the Ring tournament progressing. Superstars looking to make their name and punch their ticket for future championship opportunities, and McIntyre can truly say the same. I'm sure the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes is looking on from a distance, wanting to get his hands on the Scottish Warrior Drew McIntyre. The World Heavyweight Champion, I'm sure, is also still not feeling 100% rest and recuperated for the war he went through back at SummerSlam just two weeks ago when he took down the ring general, Gunther, and became the World Heavyweight Champion. Just last week before McIntyre arrived on the scene, Cody involved in yet another physical battle against Ludwig Kaiser, the man who stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with Carmelo Hayes earlier tonight. Cody Rhodes now sits at the top of the SmackDown Kingdom, just where he has wanted to be for quite some time. And he is finding out firsthand just what it means to be the man on top, somewhere where McIntyre used to reside. The Scottish Warrior showing you why he was once the man who held the World Heavyweight Championship for 267 days. The standard bearer, the flag bearer for SmackDown in 2023. 2024 has been a very different year for the Scottish Warrior. It has been one of many a downs and hard times for McIntyre. And that is really what pushed him over the edge, caused him to snap, target Ilya Dragunov, somebody who had beat him not once but twice before. And now Drew feels reinvigorated. Now Drew feels like he's got a chip on his shoulder. And now McIntyre is looking to get a yet another victory tonight in what I'm sure is his pursuit of the World Heavyweight Championship. Right now, Sheamus looking to worse for wear against his old buddy, the Scottish Warrior, who takes him out with an air raid crash. McIntyre looking for victory, but Sheamus not going to give him the satisfaction of doing so just yet. We knew this was going to be a physical fight between these two heavyweights. And I'm sure there's still a bit of friendship between these two men and anything that might damn near benefit the Celtic Warrior Sheamus. You're going to hit a little harder when you're in there. With somebody you, you like, you respect, very convoluted situation, but you never really know the relationship between these two men. Sheamus disrespecting, I'm sure, Drew McIntyre's eyes. The Scottish Warrior last week when he refused that handshake on WWE.com. No matter which story you want to write, we get things done inside the ring here on SmackDown, and that is what Sheamus is looking to do. Into the cover, in an attempt to humble the Scottish Warrior, as he mentioned. Unfortunately, not to be just yet. McIntyre sent into the corner by a very hard hitting, and I am sure ready to get back on track, Celtic Warrior. This great white Sheamus, a former champion in his own right holding every championship there is to hold here in the WWE. It's been quite some time since Sheamus has been on top of the mountain. Victory over Drew McIntyre tonight here on SmackDown can certainly set him down the right path. All easier said than done is Sheamus in control over the Scottish Warrior at the current moment. Or maybe not, McIntyre off a reversal. Sheamus getting caught that time. Claymore kick out of nowhere. Sheamus sent right to the ropes. McIntyre not hesitating to pull the trigger. Drew McIntyre, a changed individual. Oh, wait a minute here. And McIntyre showing his true colors, rubbing salt in the wounds, a beat down to Sheamus after the bell. Really painting the picture of the man McIntyre has become. Oh, wait a minute. Speaking of the World Heavyweight Championship, here comes its rightful holder. The American Nightmare Tony Rhodes has hit the scene and he's going after the man who dropped it with two Claymore kicks seven nights ago. 
You had to see this coming. You had to expect Cody Rhodes to be itching for his pound of flesh. Referee John Cohn can call for the bell all he wants. There is nothing and nobody that is going to get between a pissed off Scottish warrior and an even angrier Cody Rhodes. Rhodes sent in McIntyre to the outside. At least Cody had enough respect to let the matchup finish, unlike Drew last week here on SmackDown. McIntyre adding insult to injury, stomping away on the heart of the Celtic Warrior, the World Heavyweight Champion coming to be a difference maker. Oh no, McIntyre sent in the WWE Universe. Cody Rhodes ready to break things down to a brawl, but he better be careful. Drew McIntyre has become one dangerous individual and the World Heavyweight Champion does not want to continue to be caught up in the crosshairs of the Scottish Warrior. With Cody Rhodes coming to Cincinnati ready for a fight tonight, no matter if he's still feeling the effects of a war with Guther, of a, of a battle with Ludwig Kaiser last week on SmackDown. The only thing Cody Rhodes is feeling is frustration after being dropped and left dead in the middle of the ring last week by hands of McIntyre. McIntyre continuing to fight as things are breaking down into a brawl in the middle of the Heritage Bank Center in Cincinnati, Ohio between the World Heavyweight Champion and a man who desires to be the challenger. Drew McIntyre, whether he was expecting this or not, may have been caught off guard, had his sights set on Sheamus, and Cody Rhodes arrived on the scene. I don't know what Cody's got in mind, but he better be careful bringing Drew McIntyre, a very vicious and violent individual, to a very unwelcoming area in the Heritage Bank Center. McIntyre sent right into that storage box. The World Heavyweight Champion, all kinds of fired up here on SmackDown. Dropping Drew McIntyre on the concrete floor. The World Heavyweight Champion coming for his pound of flesh, but I got a feeling this one is far, far from over.